Hey everybody, welcome back to the NPTE Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So if no one has said thank you to you today for your great efforts, let me just say thank you. Thank you for what you do to get ready for this test, <clears throat> all the content knowledge that you're garnering and gaining so that you can become a fabulous physical therapist. Thank you for what you do. I know that it, it, it it's from long days of study, long nights of study, lots of toil and effort on your part. But let me just say thank you. It's a good and noble thing you're doing. So keep up the good work and keep a grin on your chin as you go through it. So today we'll be talking through a practice question related to the genital urinary system. So as you recall on this podcast, we go through all of the content outline areas for each of the body systems as it relates to the NPTE. And today is no different. We'll be talking through the genital urinary system, specifically interventions. But before we get to that question, just a quick reminder, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com slash podcast for all of our cheat sheets, tips, tricks, all the content you need in order to boost your studies, take them to the next level to really just level up on your study habits and process to make this to make this the best exam attempt ever. So whether you're going at it for your first time or for the sixth time, make it your last time so you can get through the test and make it through with flying colors. Also a reminder, we'll be starting up our VIP program. So the VIPT program, this is our small group flagship program where we're able to go through all the content areas on the NPT. It really does include pretty much everything you need in order to pass the test. We go through all the content areas. We've got videos, we've got uh, sessions about practice questions, a lot of test strategies. So I get asked that question all the time. Does it include just content or does it also include test strategy? And it certainly does include test strategy of how to answer questions, especially if you don't know the answer, get you through as best you can or get the very best guess possible. Uh, it includes tons of written material, including our workbook and study guide. We've got six practice exams. Uh, just a little preview, we'll be going through a big update on our exam simulator for October. Well, that'll be in October, targeting the 2024 exams. So we've got everything getting updated for 2024 as well. Lots to look forward to over here at PT Final Exam. Plus, when you purchase the VIP program, it gives you nine months of access. So let's say you're just finishing up the last year of PT school. It may behoove you to sign up early so you can participate in all the classes now. You get three full rounds of that, three quarters basically, as you go through, say, the October, January, and April cycles. You'll be able to get the most bang for your buck signing up early, so be sure to check that out over at ptfinalexam.com. All right, so our question today is related to the genital urinary system. So as per our usual, I will, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about the answer together. So here we go. When instructing a female patient in pelvic floor muscle training, which of the following interventions is most appropriate if inward movement of the perineal area is detected during pelvic floor muscle contraction? So when instructing a female patient in pelvic floor muscle training, which of the following interventions is most appropriate if inward movement of the perineal area is detected during pelvic floor muscle contraction? Number one, continue the treatment, carefully monitoring for any signs of discomfort. Two, instruct the patient to contract the pelvic floor to create outward movement of the perineum. Three, discontinue the treatment and refer to the primary care physician. And four, perform internal vaginal assessment of the contraction. So we have one, continue the treatment, carefully monitoring for any signs of discomfort. Two, instruct the patient to contract the pelvic floor to create outward movement of the perineum. Three, discontinue the treatment and refer to the primary care physician. And four, perform internal vaginal assessment of the contraction. All right, so this question talking about what a normal pelvic floor muscle contraction should and could look like. So the correct answer here is that it is indeed the correct response if they detect inward movement during pelvic floor muscle contraction. So this is done either through the detection from the patient, they could use an inspection mirror, something to help them detect the perineal area to make sure that it is, it is moving slightly inward if it is moving outward or there's no movement, that would require further, further assessment by a skilled PT. So this is where possibly internal vaginal assessment would be required, where you'd want to make sure to cue the patient that you'd like to have inward movement rather than outward movement or no movement at all. So an outward movement, that would be in the case that they, say they performed a valsalva maneuver at the same time or they had increased intra-abdominal pressure, that could create an opposite movement when really the target should be that slight internal movement 
from the pelvic muscle floor contraction. So a lot of times, the description here with pelvic floor muscle contraction, a lot of times like with Kegels, the idea is that you want to have a, a slight, a slight or even a moderate movement of the pelvic floor as it's uh, what the analogy is like an elevator. If you have it lift to the first floor and back down to the ground floor and then lift to the fifth floor, that's the idea is that as you contract the muscles, you should see a slight inward movement. If there's no movement or an outward movement, you'd want to make appropriate referral. And what's interesting about this, and this is according to Goodman, is that something like 50% of patients are, are not performing pelvic floor muscle exercises properly. So what I mean by that is that uh, what they surveyed and they performed this on many, many patients and they, they were able to, they identified that even with verbal instruction, the patient could not perform it properly, that it required tactile cueing and internal assessment in order to cue the patient properly. So my sister-in-law is actually a, a pelvic floor PT. She's a, a women's health certified specialist. And so certainly this is her bread and butter. She likes to talk about this a lot, but it is critical to have that internal assessment if you're doing any type of, of significant intervention when it comes to pelvic floor strengthening. And so in the case that uh, the, the patient was performing outward movement rather than inward movement, you'd want to uh, use tactile cueing and do internal assessment again to make sure that everything is contracting as it should. And that's just that that extra extra bit of cueing that's required for at least half of our patients. You'd want to refer to a primary care physician in the case that there was discomfort or any type of, of past history, especially of sexual trauma. So in the case of incest or abuse or any type of, of issue where the patient could have some I guess we'll just say discomfort related to either physical trauma or emotional trauma or mental trauma, all the, all the traumas you'd want to make sure that you're having the multidisciplinary team involved, certainly the primary care physician counseling, in addition to your pelvic floor interventions as well. So point being that if there's any type of discomfort or you, as you communicate with the patient, they report any type of past history, you'd want to make sure that a past history of trauma, you'd want to make sure to communicate very well with the, not only the patient, but the primary care physician and any counselor that's required just to make sure that you're, you're taking care of the patient from a very holistic way. And again, the point here with this question is that inward movement would be normal. That would be the normal contraction of the perineum with pelvic muscle contraction. So if you see outward movement or no movement, then that would warrant referral because it's referral or internal assessment, just again, depending on discomfort and any past history. So this question describing the normal movement and then the other, the incorrect answer options would be in the case that you had abnormal movement. So there you go. There's a question about the genitourinary interventions. Uh, what's great is that with pelvic floor muscle training, that especially females with stress urinary incontinence, uh, again, this is all according to Goodman, but the the multiple studies indicate that they are much less likely to report incontinence and very much more likely to report a cure or improvement with pelvic floor muscle training. So I guess the moral of the story is that pelvic floor muscle training is a critical component, a critical tool in your tool belt to help patients who, who are experiencing any type of urinary incontinence, that pelvic floor muscle training can be very helpful, especially for stress urinary incontinence, which again is, is one of the, yeah, one of the, the key, key issues that can, yeah, there are a number of conditions that can cause that. So uh, point being that pelvic floor muscle training is your best friend. And as uh, my professor in, in PT school, he always argued, he would ask, what's the most important muscle in the body? And he would point out that the pelvic floor muscles, that uh, the levator ani and all the, the pelvic floor muscles are the most important simply because that's which, what's required for continence, that's re what's required for a lot of community activities and social interactions that if you don't have urinary continence, then it can create all kinds of sequelae, whether that be mental, physical, emotional. There, there's a lot of issues related to it. So. Therefore, what is the most important muscle in the body? And you could say the pelvic floor, of course, which is more than one muscle. But the point being that you'd want to see small inward movement or, or detectable inward movement with perineal or pelvic muscle, pelvic floor muscle contraction. That's the goal here. So, all right, we'll bring it to a conclusion today. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to check out the other podcast episodes. And if you haven't yet, just scroll down. It only takes a moment. Leave us a five-star review. Hit the likes, whatever it is. 
Uh, it really helps. We're trying to get the word out, try to help people get through the NPTE. Be sure to check that out. Uh, check out ptfinalexam.com for all of your NPTE preparation needs. And I will catch you all in the next episode. Thanks.